Stress and Anxiety Relief. This sequence focuses on creating a feeling of balance and harmony and alleviating stress and anxiety through practices that promote the sattva and tamas gunas by using mild breathing methods and gentle holds. It also uses techniques that make the autonomic nervous system more resilient to stress-induced responses so that when we face situations that would typically create stress, we remain calm and centered. Life can be arduous. We are constantly challenged, tested, and pushed to our limits. Stress might come from work, financial difficulties, or contention with a family member, friend, or loved one. Sometimes the feeling is more than stress. It's something that arises from within, causing anguish and suffering we can't seem to shake. When we face these situations, we might take that stress upon ourselves, but generally, as the situation changes or dissipates, the feelings that accompany it also leave. But, if the feeling is coming from inside, changing external circumstances will not liberate us from the darkness. Stress is caused by external factors and, if left unchecked, can cause serious health problems, weaken the immune system, and lead to overeating, undereating, muscle pain, insomnia, depression, and anxiety. Stress also affects how we act, react, and treat people. When we're under high levels of stress, we can be emotional, irritable, angry, fearful, and insecure, plus react in ways that are not normal for us. If chronic stress is not rectified... Then, even when the external stress-causing factors are removed, the internal affliction can remain. Anxiety is slightly different. Although it is often a result of stress, it comes from within. Anxiety can be caused by genetics, altered brain chemistry, or severe life-changing events. It can create all the physical and mental health problems we get from stress and develop into more severe conditions such as panic attacks, post-traumatic stress disorder, phobias, and social anxiety. If you already suffer from an anxiety disorder, then you are well aware of the foreboding feelings that accompany it. Breath practices can immediately improve how we feel and diminish stress and anxiety. While breathing exercises might not provide an immediate cure to a chronic anxiety disorder, they can definitely help, especially when accompanied by meditation and therapy. Stress should subside when we leave behind the situation that causes it. However, we can physically leave, but mentally and emotionally carry it with us. We see this when we bring our work problems home and allow it to affect our personal life. If stress is generated from something such as financial problems, relationship problems, or a past event, then we might not be able to leave or change our situation. Still, we can choose how we see it, how we let it affect us, and how we view ourselves as part of that situation. After I returned from Iraq in 2003, I had developed PTSD. I had nightmares and trouble sleeping. I was anxious and always on guard. I would have occasional panic attacks, which I hadn't experienced since I was a child. The worst part was that I felt numb and disconnected from my friends and family. My more severe symptoms faded with time, and whatever was left, I pushed down and buried deep inside me. Unfortunately, I didn't get rid of it, I just hid it. I ended up carrying my past trauma with me much longer than I realized, and it continued to affect me long after I thought it was gone. When I developed a meditation and yoga practice, I was able to recognize the deep pain I had been carrying, not just from my experience in the war, but from my childhood and everything else. My practice helped me to see the truth, that I was not my past and my present life was beautiful. I was able to find gratitude from my past, how it led me here, and how those situations formed who I am. I had a new story and was a different person. My past life could not control my future self. If we make dough and bake it into bread, the bread will never be dough again. It is something completely different. Bread doesn't go around thinking that it's dough just because it used to be dough. And we don't need to live in the past just because we came from our past. Our breath is a constant reminder to be present and a powerful tool to let go of anything that brings stress or anxiety. Note, the breath is fantastic for releasing feelings of stress and anxiety, but if your symptoms are chronic and debilitating, I do encourage you to seek professional help. Anxiety-related disorders are highly treatable, yet few people who suffer from them do seek help. Warm up. Begin by setting into a natural breath. Think of something you are grateful for and hold it in your heart. Gratitude is one of the most powerful practices for overcoming stress. Our intention for the warm-up is to bring awareness to the breath through an exercise that is less challenging and requires some focus and awareness. The breath should be calming and promote balanced sattva energy, which gives us a sense of control and stability. We want to slowly ramp up the intensity and warm up the lungs and respiratory muscles with gradually deepening breaths. This component uses samavitri, adding a pyramid-style ratio to build the practice. Begin with a very light, soft breath of one-to-one, -one, barely filling the lungs or using any effort. Which each complete breath, add one second until you reach 10 to 10. With each breath, you also want to breathe more deeply. 
Once you reach the 10 second inhalation and exhalation, subtract one second, working back down to one to one, decreasing in depth and intensity. Starting from a simple effortless breath and building up to something more challenging, but still manageable, and then return to a calm, effortless breath, beginning to train the mind to feel challenged without being stressed. If you are coming into this practice feeling anxious, you might feel the anxiety throughout the warm up, and that's okay. You can repeat the warm up if you feel it will help, or move on to the heat building section. The heat building component uses breath of fire to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system without provoking the fight or flight response that we often feel when we are stressed. Breath of fire is a rapid, smooth, shallow, almost effortless practice, which is different from the type of hyperventilation that often accompanies an anxiety attack where the breath is rapid, deep, effortful, and uncontrollable. In this practice, breath of fire is 15 quick respirations lasting 7 to 10 seconds, followed by a deep inhalation with a 5-second hold and an open mouth exhalation. Repeat this cycle five times. Keep the rounds of breath of fire short and follow them with breath retention, lim limiting the effort effects of hyp hyp hypnocapnia that might be involved by a sustained breath of fire practice or a pranayama technique, such as kapalabhati or bastrika, which requires more effort and expels more CO2. The rapid breathing stimulates our rajas kuna, giving us an energetic boost and loosening areas of tension. Since any fast breathing can feel familiar to what we experience when we feel panic, this technique quickly interrupts the rapid breath with a deep inhalation and brief hold to establish a sense of control and give us a feeling of relief. The breath hold is followed by an open mouth exhale that allows us to release all the built up stress and anxiety we may carry. This technique strengthens the autonomic nervous system to be more resilient against a stress induced response. By establishing control and alleviating build-up tension, we can transition the sympathetic nervous system from an unsafe response that triggers fight or flight to a safe response that supports interaction and connection. Vitalizing. The vitalizing component uses four to seven to eight breaths, see page 120, which therapists commonly employ to help patients relax. The practice is based on Vishamavitri, an unequal ratio breathing practice, with a modification to the exhalation. The ratio of inhale to exhale is 1 to 2, which cultivates tamasic energy and stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. The breath retention and slow respiration rate of 3 breaths per minute slowly build up CO2 levels, which lowers the heart rate, lowers blood pressure, and relaxes the mind and body. What makes this practice unique is the pursed lip exhal exhalation. Pursed lip breathing is something that emphysema patients do to increase the pressure inside their lungs and keep the alveolar sacs from collapsing due to the lack of surfactant caused by the disease. By doing the same thing, we expand into the deeper areas of the lungs and push more oxygen to the cells. Pursed lip breathing also stimulates the vagus nerve. Studies have shown that it encourages relaxation and, through stimulation of the autonomic nervous system, improves cardiorespiratory physiological function. The 4-7-8 to, seven to eight breath is easy to do and can be done as a standalone practice anytime you feel stressed and need to relax. Start with a 4-second inhale through the nose, then hold the breath for 7 seconds, followed by an 8-second pursed lip exhalation. When you exhale, make your mouth small like you are whistling or holding a straw. The exhale should be strong enough that you feel the increased pressure in your chest, but not so strong that it feels forced like blowing on hot soup, not like blowing out birthday candles. Repeat this exercise for five cycles. Cool down. The cool down is a two-part ratio breath that alternates between emphasizing the inhale and the exhale. This practice intends to create a balanced, harmonious, sattvic state by varying the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Stress and anxiety can push us towards feelings of agitation and restlessness or depression and weakness. It doesn't matter whether we activate the sympathetic nervous system or the parasympathetic nervous system if it is coming from a place of unease. Both sides create a negative stress response, either fight or flight or freeze. Here we use the breath to establish a sense of safety and care. Then, by strengthening both sides of the autonomic nervous system separately while creating balance, we can move out of both negative states into a place of tranquility. The breath practice alternates between breath rates of 10 to 10 to 2 and 2 to 10 to 10. The first part of the sequence brings the focus to the inhale and is more sympathetic. The second part brings attention to the exhale and is parasympathetic. We start with a 10 second inhale, a 10 second inner retention, and a 2 second full exhale, followed by a 2 second full inhale, a 10 second retention, and a 10 second exhale. After the first breath, the transition between the first exhale and the second inhale feels very quick. However, when we get to the third breath, we are following a long exhalation with another long inhalation. The long breaths give us a feeling of relaxation, and the short breaths give us a feeling of relief and ease, dissolving any pressure or worry.